We're going to begin this hour with our exclusive interview. We love when this happens with Charles Kelly. You know him from the country music group Lady A. Never Get Over You, that's Lady A's hit song, What If I Never Get Over You. I love this group. They've been making music together for 17 years now. Last August, you may know, the trio postponed their tour to allow their bandmate, Charles Kelly, to seek treatment for alcohol abuse. We caught up with Kelly and his lovely wife, Cassie. She's a superstar in their home in Nashville for an honest conversation about the singer's path to sobriety. Kelly has seen the highest highs as one third of chart topping country trio Lady A. How many Grammys is one? Seven. Two, three, four. Yeah. Seven. I know. But Kelly says behind the scenes, his relationship with alcohol was taking a turn for the worse. I remember joking, you know, everyone uh, with, with buddies, I was like, yeah, I'm definitely a function alcoholic. And I said, I know I'm going to have to stop at some point, but that's not today. Mm -hmm. And that was always kind of my little joke. It was like, that tells you, I kind of knew. Oh, I miss those days. Kelly says his bandmates, Hillary Scott and Dave Haywood, knew too. I think it was about, gosh, it might have been about five years ago now where, where Dave and Hillary had, had set me down. It was the first time that they had really, you know, I mean, we would have shows where like, hey, man, you, you, you might have had a little too much to drink that night. Or I was like, okay, well, has it affected my, how hard I work? Has it affected the shows? And what did and they say to that? I think it was more just, I'm worried about you. And and to me, I think, if I remember correctly, it was more about how I would speak to them when I was drinking. Mm -hmm. I'd be very dismissive, very quick. Um, you know, there was never any, any physical stuff, but very emotional and verbal, just, mm -hmm. I think, outburst. I could recognize that that was alcohol-induced for sure. Kelly also revealed how his wife Cassie said that his drinking affected their seven-year-old son, Ward. Cassie would tell me some stories about how little things that Ward would say um, that I, I didn't even know he was noticing. You know, mm. Daddy, Daddy's talking a little funny. Mm. Or, you know, you and Daddy are, you know, y'all argue a, a, a lot. But just to hear Ward said, Daddy's talking a little funny. What did that, that do to that, you when that you heard was, that? That, that? That crushed me. So little, you know, things like that just, you know, he's, He's the most important thing in my life, yeah. hands down. No, you, you said that you, you had tried to quit before, yeah. but you have never tried this way. What was the difference between what you did before and what you did this time? That, well, that I mean, I, I'll admit, I went to a rehab facility for a month and- um, You had never done that before? Oh my gosh, I was scared to death. I'd had several people and several therapists suggest it. And I said, no, I'll, I will never, ever go into a rehab facility. I was like, that's for people that wake up in the morning and you know. They're in the sidewalk. Yeah, they're or, pouring yeah. up, you yeah. know. And what I've learned is there's degrees of alcoholics. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that, that's one of the things too that I want to even share is like, just because you're not living on the street or you're not waking up in a bush, like some stories you may hear, you, it can get there and it can get there really easily. And, and it's like no one that starts drinking just, you know, starts at the top. It's just this gradual mm -hmm. thing. And so, um, but for me, putting the tools in. Mm -hmm. uh, what are your tools? Uh, a lot of a lot of meetings. Mm -hmm. uh, I go to a, a lot of uh, group meetings with with other other alcoholics, and I've got a, um, a case manager. I even, I mean, I'm not even ashamed to admit it. I've got this little device I blow in every morning and every night, mm -hmm. and it's not even for me. It's for my wife, it's for the band, it's for everyone else to know because I think are, that's- Are you checking alcohol then? Yeah, and so slowly but surely that has built the trust back that eventually I think that won't be, be a necessity. We asked Cassie to join the conversation to discuss the journey she learned is just as much hers. One thing that I was shocked about um, when I first, when he was in rehab and I went out there for family week and um, you know, one of the first messages you receive is, you're gonna have to do just as much work here. And I remember being so mad. Thinking, just, I don't have an issue. Well, right, yeah. like you did this, uh -huh. and now I have to do all of this work too. Mm -hmm. But the truth is that, you know, they call it the family disease of alcoholism, and it affects every person in that family system. So I could have chosen not to do the work, yeah. but then 
I have to live with the way that I've been affected mm -hmm. and unhealed. Mm -hmm. So whether Charles and I were in a marriage or not, whether I saw him again for the rest of my life, mm -hmm. I still had to deal with what I had gone through. Why did you stay, Cassie? Um, I know you love him, but why did yes. you stay? You know, Sometimes I, love isn't enough. Well, I don't think love is always enough. I mean, I think a marriage is built on a lot more than just love. Um, but I think ultimately when I thought about, well, we have a seven-year-old um, who is either going to be in my home all the time or he's going to be half the time in a home with his dad where I have no idea what's happening in that environment. And in order for me to take myself out of his life every day, it just was never got to be that bad. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, until it just is, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and, and that's kind of where we were leaving Greece. Charles describes what happened during that trip. Basically, we had gotten an argument and I like just turned my phone off in a, you know, middle of nowhere and just took off and stayed up drinking with all these like random people I didn't know had, you know. That you didn't know. And like I was, and, and just literally woke up like, she woke up at what, like seven and well, I, I never her and... went to sleep. Oh, because <laughs> he didn't come home. Sleep. Yeah, he Wives don't like that. No. But we had got <laughs> yeah, an argument wow. and I, I had one of those moments uh, where I just was like, I'm so sick of being told what to do. And uh -huh. I turned off the phone and I didn't realize I had eight, eight of my friends looking for me all night. Cassie says that was almost the beginning of the end. The next morning, you know, I said, you need help. Mm -hmm. You have to deal with this. Um, and he said he knew. And um, he made a plan with his manager to, to, and he flew directly from Greece to treatment. Mm -hmm. um, but at that point, I thought I was fully flying back to the U.S. I was going to meet with a divorce attorney. Mm -hmm. Like, that was it. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Charles, when you hear that? She was mm, thinking about a yeah, divorce attorney. I mean, I guess, again, it just makes me feel so grateful at how close I came to yeah. losing it all. And um, I think the thing that's hard is to know how, how much it affected Cassie the most and my band and the mm -hmm. people around me and how much it, like, it emotionally kind of wrecked them for a while. And mm -hmm. that you can't really say I'm sorry enough. And it's just, it's just going to take time to rebuild that. Charles Kelly's road to recovery includes therapy sessions with his group. Just last month, Lady A began their new tour at the historic Ryman Auditorium in Nashville, where Kelly sang a song that he wrote, the name As Far As You Could. He calls it his goodbye letter to alcohol. Cause you taken me as far as you could. You could hear the interview. What were you thinking as he was talking? Yeah, I'm really proud of him. Yeah. Thank you. Um, because, you. you know, it's not easy to walk through and it's not easy to, you know, stay connected and to just put your head down and do the work because it is a lot of work. Mm -hmm. And, you know, because he keeps showing up every day, I get to keep showing up every day. Mm -hmm. And um, our family gets to be intact. So I'm really, really proud of him. Yeah. yeah. And like I said, I mean, I, I couldn't do it without, without her support. I, I really think... No, you Char know, Charles Kelly, you are deeply loved. I know. You must I feel, feel that. I do. You I feel a feel lot that. of love. Yeah. Yes. Oh. Hmm. Truly, bravo to them both. Lady A is back on stage, and they have a rule, no alcohol on the bus, no alcohol on the road, no alcohol in the hotels. But he said he doesn't want people to feel weird drinking around him, because he's all for drinking responsibly. Yeah. That's, he said, you know, I don't want people, when I walk in the room, they're holding it behind their back. Yeah. <clears throat> Lady A has songs like, it's a quarter after one, I'm a little drunk, and I need you now. Right. They're going to still keep singing those songs. He said, because, you know, I, I am changing, and I just choose to choose my friends differently, behave differently, and he's all for people who are okay with drinking responsibly. I love that, I, you know, I, I'm happy that he's on the road to recovery, but yes. can I just say, Cassie, her oh, strength is yes. blinding. Yes. I mean, yes. the fortitude and the strength to keep that family together and to stick around when 
people are going through difficult times. Because as she said, she was done and done, and he knew that too. Yeah. You, but you can't do it for Cassie, you can't do it for your favorite son, you have to do it for yourself, which he's doing, but he doesn't want to do anything that jeopardizes his family, and frankly, jeopardizes his career. Yeah. Yeah. So they're solid, but it still takes a lot of work, and they both know that, and they're prepared to do the work. they got a lot of long road ahead, but they're on the road, and that's the important part. Yes, yeah, so I appreciate that they let us come to their home, and they were both, both so candid and honest with us. Cheering you on, Kellys, cheering you on, you and Cassidy, always. If you or a loved one are experiencing a problem with alcohol, please know help really is available via the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration line. The number you see on your screen, and we'll put it up on our website because nobody can write it down this quickly. You probably don't even have a pen. 1-800-662-HELP. That's 1-800-662-HELP.